Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 52, Attributes. In this session, we will understand the purpose of attributes using an attribute in an example and customizing attributes using parameters. Now, let's understand what an attribute is and what is the purpose of attributes in life. Basically, attributes allow us to add declarative information to our programs, and this information can then be retrieved at runtime using reflection. Let's look at an example which will make this clear to us. Now, let's say I have a very simple calculator class, so public class calculator. And all this class does is it has got an add method. which can basically add two numbers. So first number and a second number. So what this method does, it adds those two numbers and return their sum. So return the sum of first and second numbers. Okay, now if people want to use this method, all they do is, since this is a static method, they can invoke it on the name of the class. So calculator class dot add and then maybe I want to add 10 and 20 okay so here if I want to add two numbers then this method is useful let's say for example there are users who want to add three numbers so is this function useful now so what we have to do is probably add another overloaded version of add that can add three numbers so if I just make a copy of this so maybe I will have something like this maybe another third number the end third number and then what we will do we will return the sum of that as well okay all right so if somebody wants to add three numbers they can do that now they can also pass in maybe another third number okay fine but let's say there is another user who wants to add five numbers now if you look at this we might add another method which takes in five parameters but what if there is a user who wants to add 20 parameters? Do you create a method with 20 parameters? No. So basically, the way we have thought about this, you know, initially when we are developing the calculator class, you know, we didn't think about the requirements for the future. And we just provided an add method which can add two numbers. But the requirements over the period of time have changed and users want to add more number of numbers. And to allow users to do that, okay, we are adding an enhancement to our class. And probably what you can do is I am adding maybe a list of integers. And by the way, list is a generic collection which is present in system.collections.generics. So import that namespace. And then what I want to basically do is list of int and then we can pass in numbers. So now if you look at this method, whoever wants to add like three or four or five or even two, you know, they can just pass in those two numbers as a list of integers and your method will be capable of doing that. So let's quickly implement this. So for each int number in numbers so what we want to do we want to add those numbers and let's create a simple sum variable to hold the sum so int sum is equal to zero and what we can do sum is equal to sum plus number and basically this is the implementation of this method and finally we want to return the sum Okay, now if you look at this method, this method is pretty useful. Now, this method is, this method can basically add two numbers, three numbers, five numbers, you know, depends on the user how many numbers he wants to add because it is taking in a list of numbers. And why did we introduce this method? Because of the limitations of this number, this method. Okay, it can only add two numbers, this method, but whereas this method can add any number of numbers. Okay, so as we go forward you know this calculator class and this calculator class if you look at this this method is an outdated method but whereas this is a new method so anybody who is using your calculator you want the users to use the new method that you have introduced here instead of the old add method okay so how do you tell the users to do that now you might be thinking okay instead of doing that what if i am to remove this method Okay, if you remove this method, 
you know there might be users who are using your add method before and they will break okay that's why you have to leave that old method there for you know backward compatibility people who are already using your add method shouldn't break and they should continue to work the way they are but new people whoever are going to use your calculator you know you want to tell them to use the new method how do you do that you know an example would be to use an attribute okay so within the dotnet framework there's an attribute called obsolete attribute which we can use now using that attribute i can add declarative information to this method for example the absolute attribute the way we add it is now look at this this user is using this add method and we don't get any compilation error i mean error or a warning message look at this when i try to build the solution and if i go into the output window it says okay we don't have errors or warnings so let's say rebuild solution and if you now go to the window so one succeeded zero failed zero skip there are no errors and there are no warnings okay now what i want to basically do is if somebody uses this method add which takes in two numbers instead of the list one i want to show a warning message in the compiler window is that possible absolutely that's possible using attributes and we can make use of obsolete attribute and you look at the name obsolete the name itself says something is obsolete outdated this method is outdated and this is the one which people should be using so now what I can do is I can use the obsolete attribute so just decorate your method with obsolete and look at this the moment we have done that you see a green squiggly line there indicating that calculator dot add which takes in two integer parameters is obsolete look at that window okay so so this I'm using this attribute to add some declarative information to this method okay so if you look at the definition so what's an attribute An attribute allow you to add declarative information to your program this information can then be queried at runtime using reflection so using reflection what what this visual studio is doing is okay this add method has got obsolete okay so it's it's checking that when I am using that add method it's it's actually checking okay there is an obsolete attribute and the purpose of this one is to generate compiler warnings and errors and it it displays that information to us and how is that possible because of this attribute so attributes basically allow you to add declarative information to your methods or types or even at the assembly level you can apply attributes to properties methods classes etc and the way you apply them is you apply let's say for example i want to add an attribute to this method I just specify it just before that you know using square brackets okay fine now let us say how to customize this attribute now if you look at this attribute okay if I build my solution okay build succeeded on the status bar if I go to the output window you should see that you know there is zero errors and one warning and if you look at that warning it clearly says okay calculator dot add int comma int is obsolete all right that's fine it's obsolete okay if I am not supposed to use this add method then which method am I supposed to use you know the way you're using the obsolete attribute here is not that useful to the to the developer who is using your class because you're telling him this add method is obsolete but you're not providing him with an alternative and to do that you can actually customize this okay so what I basically can do look at this to this attribute I can pass in look at this there are three overloaded you know obsolete attribute constructors okay so one of three one version which does not take any parameter if you look at the other one it takes a string message and if you look at another one it takes a boolean error okay so which means using this overloaded version of this attribute and look at this when I right click on this obsolete attribute and say go to definition what's an attribute an attribute is nothing but a class if you look at this you know the name of this class is obsolete attribute and this is inheriting from the base system dot attribute class so keep that in mind all attributes directly or indirectly inherit from system dot attribute class and what are attributes they are nothing but they are also classes and if you look at this 
class it has got three constructors and when you are using that attribute you're actually creating an instance of that attribute class and you are using one of the overloaded constructors and passing in parameters to customize the message that you want to have displayed okay in this case let's say I want to tell the user to use this method instead of add int int so how do I do that there is one of the overloaded constructor of this obsolete attribute class which takes in a string message so I can pass my string message here so what I'm saying is use add of list which takes a list of integers okay so what we are doing now is basically we are passing in this message into this attribute now if I hover my mouse over here okay let's build this and now if you look at this look at that it has calculated that add that takes in two integer parameters is obsolete but whereas add list of int I mean it says use add list of int numbers method okay so this method is you obsolete use add of list I mean add method that takes in a list of parameters so now if I just say instead of this one okay let's pass in list of integers so list of integers and let's say I want to pass in 10 20 and 40 and let's see what happens now if we build the solution okay do I have the compiler warning now I don't so obviously this has served my purpose now I want to tell to my users of this calculator class you know this method is obsolete they shouldn't be using that how am I doing that using the obsolete attribute we have also seen how to customize the message that is shown to the user using parameters and we also understood that an attribute is nothing but a class that inherits from system dot attribute based class and another thing if you look at this if I right click on that and say go to definition the name of the class is actually obsolete attribute but if you look at the way we are using it we are saying obsolete so how is that possible actually you can also use attribute here so this attribute part of the attribute is optional okay now the behavior is exactly the same except that you this is optional you can either use it or not okay so let's get back to the slides so we have seen how to you know use attributes customize the message they display to the user and within dotnet framework you know actually there are two types of attributes one is the predefined attributes which are actually provided by dotnet framework like obsolete attributes we have seen an example of how to use that and there is a web method attribute for example if you are an asp.net programmer and if you are developing web services and as part of that web services you want to expose a method as a web service method then you have to decorate that with web method attribute probably when we talk about ASP.NET that's when we will see how to use this web method attribute and similarly for example if you're working across application domains for example if you're developing a remoting application or a WCF application where the objects will be crossing application domain boundaries then those object needs to be serialized and one of the simple ways of serializing a class is to make use of serializable attribute okay so there are several attributes like this and it is also possible to create our own custom attributes okay but creating custom attributes we mean you know we'll talk about that in a later session but just understand that you know there are lots and lots of predefined dotnet attributes that we can make use of for a variety of purposes okay and uh, we have also understood an attribute is a class that inherits from system dot attribute base class on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions and by the way I just forgot to tell you one more thing I mean this attribute class you can customize it to the next level as well if you look at this obsolete attribute it has got another constructor which takes it takes in another parameter boolean true or false and it says error okay now by default that's false meaning look at this I can pass in the second parameter into this method 
and what does it say? The boolean value that indicates whether the obsolete element usage is considered an error. Now, if you want the if you want the users to prevent using this method completely, then you can say, I mean, to this parameter you can pass in true. So now, when you pass in true to this parameter, you're basically telling, okay, this method is obsolete. If anybody tries to use this method, you know, just raise an error. That's what this parameter does. So if I go ahead and use the older version, you know, some 10 comma 50, and look at this. The moment I do that, the moment I flip to using this method, I already have a red squiggly there indicating, you know, calculator.add is obsolete, and it's a red squiggly meaning an error. If I try to go to the output window, you should see, I mean, error list, you should already see that. Okay, calculator.add int comma int is obsolete. Use this method instead. Okay, so it's also possible to raise error message. So it's completely attributes using parameters. You can completely customize them and then use it to, the, to your need. All right, so on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.